Today we're going to use the brand new Tinkercad sketch tool to make a sweet, squeezable bug. So let's get cracking. Today, friends, I need you to start with a template. We're going to get there by typing bit.ly slash tinkbug and pressing enter. Of course, there will also be a link in the description. When you get there, friends, of course, it is set to copy and tinker. So don't forget the golden rule of Tinkercad. Give a reaction before you copy and tinker. Now, as I showed you in the intro, we are going to make a bug where when we squeeze the back, the jaws open up. It uses a sweet layering technology and the brand new sketch tool. Bring this out and set it right on top. Zoom out a little bit and we are going to first trace this body. Let's start with the straight lines. We can simply click anywhere on these to make them. Notice I cannot snap right to that point unless I switch down here to off. Now I can get as close as I can and click and click all the way around this jaw piece. Now when I get to this back one, I'm going to click and switch to this curve and I want to go up here and get it as close as I can when I click and hold and stretch that so it's similar. Doesn't have to be perfect, we just want it similar. I want to go back to my straight line, come down here. And we're going to trace these jaws once again, getting as close as you can to perfect, but it is not essential to be exactly like mine. You just want to create the awesome teeth for the lower jaw. Once again, straight line, straight line, straight line, back to the cool curve, and connect. Remember to hold the mouse and stretch to get it the way you want. When you're done, we can click on these points and adjust them. I'm going to switch over here to the break handles button, which is the number three on the keyboard. Then I can pull this one out so it's close there. Because this was straight and twisted, those handles were already broken. Notice you can switch between these different handles by clicking the points and adjusting them. Now this one right here, we want to be straight, right? So if we click on this handle and switch to this one, bingo, it goes back to straight mode. This one, I want to see if I can get it so it matches perfectly. I'm going to finish this off by adding a new point. I want to show you this real quickly. When we add that point, notice you do have to switch because if you click on something else, check this out, it deletes it. So I'm going to do Control Z to undo that. You also have an undo button right here. I've got that new point, so now I'm going to modify it. And now I can click on this and get it closer to perfect. And once again, a little closer to perfect. Bingo, we've matched that, we've matched the rest, and we've quickly highlighted that we can make straight lines. This is the smooth corners, notice the shortcut is two, and then right here we have the break handles command. With this drawn, we simply hit finish sketch. Here is our new piece. We're gonna set it to a size of three, Press enter, and then I'm also going to switch the color to green just so we can keep these layers separated. If we hide this part real quick, you'll notice that this was not sitting on the bottom. We're going to hit D to drop so that it is. Bring everything back, and now you can see that those merge, and we are going to trace the head. Once again, bring out your sketch tool. Set it on top. When sketch loads, we are still in off for snap grid. That is fantastic. We're going to do all these straight lines, and then we're going to do the curve. This is a little bit more efficient. Straight down, bend, trace, up, trace. Once again, close as you want, but you don't have to be perfect. When we get here, we're going to switch to curve mode. Click, hold, and get as close as we can. That's pretty amazing. Nailed it in one piece. Once again, you can let go and modify. You can also zoom in on these points to get them as perfect as you want. Of course, you can also click on entire lines and move them as well. I'm going to call that good. And friends, I'm going to hit finish. This one, we're going to change to size 14 because it is all by itself. We're going to hit D to drop, so it's now at the bottom of our project. I'm going to quickly set my nudge back to 1. Let's take this red piece and let's do shift nudge to move it out so we could come back to it if we ever want to. 
And let's quickly use our first layer to create our second layer. The first thing I'm going to tell you is put the work plane on top. Select that piece, do Control D and D to drop. Let's also pick a different color. We'll make it yellow. Let's start by taking our sketch and making it two millimeters thick. I've done that math for you. And now we want two of these, so I'm going to do Control D. And for a moment, I'm going to make the second one blue. Once I click back here, I'm going to lock it. That way the blue one won't get messed with, and we're going to hide it so we can now edit the yellow one. Click Edit, and what we need to do is cut away this middle area. Check out how easy this is. We're going to hit the plus sign. We're going to add a point here and a point here. We do need to switch back to the Select and Move, letter V, and we simply need to delete all those pieces. Check it out. This gives us a nice straight line that we can now nudge up. We do need to change our nudge back to off so we can get it exactly where we want. I'm going to just pick somewhere up in this area. That is the whole modification. Simply hit finish sketch and that part is complete. Let's do show all to bring our other parts back. We can now edit this one so I'm going to unlock it. And if we double click, we're just going to repeat that process but keep the bottom half. Add a point, add a point, switch back to mod, grab all of these and hit delete. Notice I missed this one, no big deal. Click it and delete. There's our straight line and finish. That gave us two pieces on this layer that are still going to be together, but they're gonna have that awesome gap in the middle. Now we're gonna use these two pieces to create the next layer. Once again, W is the shortcut for work plane. Click and set your work plane on top of the yellow shape and do Control D and drop. Click on the blue shape, Control D and D to drop as well. Both of these need to be size four. This is going to be the thick part that connects to the head for the springy action and size four and press enter. I'm going to do shift select and I'm going to make these both red so that way they show up as the extra layer. I'm also going to click this blue one and I'm going to set it to yellow so that way it matches. The only one we need to modify is the red one. Simply click it and double click it to edit the sketch. And then we need to take this part and we need to extend it up into the head. We're going to simply add points. I'm going to just add them right here. So now I've got these two to mess with. Notice if you click on them while you're still in this mode, they delete. Don't forget that. You want to switch back. Then you can grab your handle and drag it up into your head, making sure that it connects. Notice I've got a lot of extra space there. You do not have to worry about this angle matching. You just want enough room that it can push down when you squeeze the back. Pushing this spot right here is going to lower that jaw so it opens. Once you've got this lined up the way you want, nice straight lines. Remember, we can use these tools to adjust them if we need. You simply hit Finish Sketch. Now, when this 3D prints, there is going to be a gap in between them, and that's what allows it to bend when we're done. Let's finish our layers by doing work plane on top of this. Click the yellow pieces. I'm going to shift select so I've got both of them. Control D and D to drop. Now I'm going to put the work plane up on top. Click on the green piece and once again, Control D and D to drop. Bingo, you have just made a part that you can 3D print. And when it's finished, you'll be able to squeeze the back to open the jaws. How cool is that? Real quickly. I'm going to grab them all and I'm going to do control G to group them. We're going to switch it back to this arrangement for printing, but right now for decorating, I'm going to stand it up 90 degrees. Remember when you rotate it's 22 and a half degrees. If you stay inside the circle, if you hold down shift, it's 45 degrees per turn. Once I've got it rotated D to drop. So we've got a better look at our bug. Let's add some fun eyes. I'm going to add those eyes with the cylinder. I'm going to cruise them out just like that. I'm going to hold down shift and squeeze it till it's somewhere close to five. Because this living work plane is right here, I can drag it wherever I want. If you accidentally get rid of that, you can put the work plane back there with the letter W. Now when you click on this, you can use the arrow keys to move it. We do need to turn that nudge back on though, because we had shut it off earlier. I'm going to use a half millimeter nudge. 
And then I'm gonna take that eyeball and do control down arrow to sink it in twice, which would be a whole millimeter. Now I want this to be on the other side as well. I'm gonna put the work plane back on the ground, click on our eyeball and do control D. Hit W for work plane to put it right here and do D to drop. Now they're exactly lined up. I can click on this and do control down arrow and sink it in two millimeters. Real quickly, I'm gonna add some fun decorations up here. I am gonna recommend shapes like the paraboloid, the pyramid, or the cone, and let me show you why. When I cruise this out on top, say it's gonna be ears or a horn, if you wanted to make a unicorn bug, squeeze it down so it's pretty darn small. Notice I'm going all the way down to size four. I cruised it on top of this shape, and I'm gonna sink it in a couple clicks. So control down sinks it in. I'm gonna put my work plane back on the ground. I'm gonna give it two of these. So I'm gonna select it and do control D, shift nudge. And then I'm gonna select these two and I'm gonna group them with control G. What that did is it allows me to select it all, choose L for a line, choose L for a line, make the bug the boss and center those. See how they nudged a little bit? Now when this 3D prints, I'm gonna show you once again, it's gonna be laying like this, D for drop. The angles of those shapes allows us to print without necessarily having to have supports. Same thing with our teeth up here. They were also oriented this way so that the teeth would print better. You could also put a heart or a star on here and indent it instead. Let me show you real quickly the heart trick. Once again, bring it out. Of course, I've got a shift squeeze to make it small enough so that it fits. I'm gonna drag it so that I'm sure it connects. I would wanna rotate it, I think. Let's get it lined up so it's that way. And if we make it a hole and do control down arrow, it sinks in. I'm gonna put the work plane back on the ground, select it all, L for a line, and I'm gonna make the bug the boss, and I wanna center that. See how it's now right in the middle, kinda of like a nose. If we select those two, and since it's a hole, if we do control G, bingo, you've just cut a cute little heart into your bug. Let's use that same trick to add our name really quick. Once again, let's cruise some text out here. I'm gonna put HL on the front. You can pick from these four fonts. You do need to make them a whole. And then I'm gonna shift squeeze to make sure they fit. I can drag them into place. And when I'm happy, I'm gonna do control down arrow to sink them in one millimeter. I'm gonna do that same thing back here on the feet. Once again, cruise, make it a hole. I'm gonna stay with the same font. This time I'm gonna say mod. Of course, shift squeeze to make it small. Once again, arranging with that living work plane. If you make a mistake, W for work plane and just put the normal work plane back there. And when I've got my first word, you may only have one word, I'm gonna do control D, use the arrow keys to nudge that down and make the bottom piece say tech. I wanna make sure they fit. I can use the nudge to get it exactly the way I want. Now I'm gonna put the work plane back down on the ground. And now we can select all those parts and do control G to group. Bingo, a fun, 3D printable bug. Notice these are not sunk in as far as I want, so I'm going to double click. I'm gonna shift click on each of these, and I'm just gonna nudge them in with the arrow keys. I think two clicks is going to be perfect. Bingo, a fun little 3D printable bug. Friends, let's quickly get this sent for 3D printing. I'm gonna select the shape, choose export, and then I'm gonna choose an STL, only the selected shape. We don't need our template we started with. I always put mine in my 3D modeling folder and, and I'm gonna change this to 2025 sketch bug. And if I were in a classroom, I'd have you put your initials right after it. With that exported, let's bounce to Bamboo Lab Studio and get it printed. Now, of course, step one, we're gonna create a brand new project. Let's add our design. Once again, 3D modeling. There's the sketch bug and I'm just gonna do the 0.2 millimeter standard settings. Slice the plate, check it out. It'll be done in about 20 minutes for a classroom project. Once again, we can simply hit print plate, double check our colors, and send it to the 3D printer. 
Friends, once you are happy with your awesome design, it is so easy to show the world. The first steps I like to do are make the background a cool color. I'm gonna choose a custom blue today. And then shut off the background that gives you a cooler background for taking images to show off your design. Once you're happy with this, simply back out to the Tinkercad dashboard. Click up on the little properties button. Make sure you give it an awesome name. Mine, of course, mentions the tutorial is coming soon. You can also check these other links to find out more about me and my channel. Finally, add tags. And don't forget if you add the HLMT23 tag, I check that every day. And of course, I will give you a reaction. The next step is to make it public and then you get to choose attribution share alike where people can copy and change your project or you can choose attribution no derivatives where people can see your project but only give it reactions. Finally, when you're done, make sure you hit save changes. After just a moment, friends, you can click the gallery. Of course, you will start with the amazing staff picks. Don't forget when you check these out, reactions are always appreciated. Of course, if it's set to copy and tinker, don't forget the golden rule of Tinkercad. Give a reaction before you copy and tinker. Finally, if you're checking out one of my projects, you can also scooch down and check out all the other things that I'm sharing. Don't forget, you can also hit load all to see if there are more projects. Of course, friends, what I want to highlight here, though, is if we shut off staff picks and switch to the larger view, you'll be able to instantly see all the amazing designs that have been made public. Don't forget when you click on these, if you see something you think is awesome, make sure you give it a reaction. Oliver, that is fantastic. There are always so many cool designs to see. It only takes you a moment. And of course, friends, you just never know whose day you might be making. And there they are, friends. So many awesome little bugs printed. You'll notice right here, I added words on the back. That is a separate video. I'll make sure there's a link to that in the description as well. Friends, there you have it. Simple skills to make your own custom bug. Of course, friends, I'm looking forward to seeing all the amazing creations that you make. Don't forget, tag them with HLMT23 when you make them public. And of course, I will give them a reaction. Friends, I do also want to give a quick shout out to my supporters on Patreon. Love how that group is growing. You can learn more in the description of this video and using the bit.ly up above. Finally, friends, I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget, every time you hit that like button, share a video add a comment down below or hit subscribe you're helping hl mod tech get just a little bit bigger which absolutely makes my day friends have a glorious day and keep tinkering